Good morning, church. My name is Thomas Cherian, the director of youth here at Liberty United Methodist Church. I want to extend a special welcome to our first time guest. And of course, I encourage everyone, everyone to sign in with us. Um, and if you're joining us on a Sunday morning, you can do that by clicking on the connection tab above, or you can go to our website at lumcmo.org and click on guest connections there. We look forward to welcoming a new little girl into the family of God through the sacrament of baptism. Join us in celebrating her and the gift of our own baptism. Here at LEMC, we exist to be a Christian community where people encounter Jesus and lives are transformed. We hope you find your heart transformed as we encounter the living God in worship today. As we continue in worship, Hear this call to worship from Matthew 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We need your presence on the long road, Lord, the road between fear and hope, the road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us. In your risen power, let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Yeah. 
morning, friends. Thank you for joining me for the children's message today. Today, Pastor Steve is going to tell us a story about a man named Isaiah in the Bible. And Isaiah was a prophet. I don't know if you guys know what that word means, but a prophet is somebody God calls to be God's messenger and deliver a message from God to the people. And Isaiah was just having a regular day one day when God appeared before him as though he was sitting on a throne in a temple. And there are these crazy angels with six wings with him. It was a crazy sight. And God said, who shall I send? And Isaiah, even though everything seemed just crazy, Isaiah said, here I am, God, send me. Isaiah was willing to answer God's call and to go be God's messenger and deliver a message to the people. And that God asks us to be messengers today. Did you know that? Maybe God won't appear before us with crazy six-winged angels and ask us something. I don't know, maybe. But God still wants us to deliver God's message. God wants us to go and tell people that God loves them. And so can you guys practice being a prophet with me? Can you practice being God's messenger? We're going to practice telling people that God loves them. So I want you to turn to your mom or dad or brother or sister or whoever's sitting with you and say, hey, God loves you. Good job. Now let's try just saying it really loud. Hey, everyone, God loves you. Did you practice that? Way to go. You are well on your way to being a prophet, just like Isaiah. Let's pray, and we'll ask God to help us be God's messengers. Dear God, thank you for giving us the story of Isaiah, who was willing to say yes when you called him. Help us to say yes to your call as well, and to go be your messengers, and to deliver the message that you love everyone. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, we're gathered here today to celebrate and to baptize Sterling James Lynch, a new member of our congregation, a new member of God's family. We're so very excited to welcome you to this baptism and a hearty welcome to all of your family and friends as well. Uh, there's a few questions I have to go through to ask every time we do this. And uh, so I'll begin with those. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you folks, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If so, say, I will. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I will. I will. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church that Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I will. I will. Will you nurture this child in... Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself and to profess her faith openly and lead a Christian life. If so, say, I will. You guys are doing great. Just hang on a few more minutes. Hi, sweetie. Hello. Sterling James Lynch, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being born in you, that by water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Should we go back to Mama? Okay. She's a Mama's girl, but we all love her. And Lindsay, will you present Sterling to the whole church? Look at her. She is precious. Folks, Sterling James Lynch, she is a child of promise. 
and a wonderful member of our congregation. I'm going to repeat the things that I said earlier when Sterling was having a moment. The Holy Spirit being born in you, that through water and the Spirit you may be a faithful disciple. Now for those of you who are out there, members of the household of God, I commend Sterling James Lynch to your care. I encourage you to do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. You can read the vows that I will read, but also if you're with us online, we encourage you to send up the little heart emoji that goes with our online platform. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child that she may grow in the community of love and forgiveness, and we will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way of life. Amen. God's blessing on all of you folks. As you share in this time of prayer, please remember all of those with our health concerns that we lift up. We lift up Julia Goodman, Richie Robinson, and Bob Mellinger. Let's pray. this time I'd like to invite you to join me all in a time of prayer. Let the church come together and let us pray. Dear God, we come to you today with gratitude in our hearts and gratefulness on our lips, thanking you for the tremendous things that you have brought into our world and the things that you are doing to sustain life and the ways that you are moving powerfully in the life of our church. We thank you for a great week of warm weather that have allowed us to be able to be outside and, and do things that, that are encouraging. We thank you, God, that seasons like this remind us that your mercies are new every morning and that your faithfulness to us is great, even as you said through the prophet Jeremiah so many years ago. God, I pray that as we come to you this morning with gratitude and thanksgiving, that you will receive also our requests, that you will turn your ear towards us, that, and you will incline your heart towards your people, that you will heal, restore, sustain, and bind up all of the brokenhearted that are represented in our congregation, our community, and the world beyond, that you will do a powerful work in those who have been struggling with illness, that you will protect our community. We ask God that you will continue to provide for us as Jehovah's Sid Canoe, the great provider. We ask that you will continue to order your world in the way that you see fit. All of these things we bring to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to Florida. <laughs> Life is full of unexpected surprises. The best revelations transport us beyond mundane existence. Scripture records many stories where ordinary people suddenly found themselves in the presence of Almighty God. Those unexpected encounters witnessed heaven invading humanity. Prophets were called, disciples commissioned, and God's ways revealed. 
Join us on an expedition to recognize God's unexpected presence, because surprise is the greatest gift life can grant us. Good morning. Welcome to Liberty United Methodist Church. I'm Steve Klaus, the lead pastor here, and I'm so very pleased to be able to welcome you to our online worship service today. Have you ever had an experience where sensation and memory are so strong you felt transported to another reality? There's one place in the world where I've undergone that sensation. When I was a small boy, my parents would sometimes send me to my grandparents' farm for the weekend, It was a wonderful place with many things to explore. When I was there, I would always ask my grandpa to take me fishing in his pond. Grandpa and I would catch bluegill and crappie together and bring them to my grandmother in a pail. My grandparents' backyard contained a granite boulder placed there by glaciers. The boulder was as large as a desk and it was cracked in half so that it made a perfect table. Grandma Storms would clean the fish on that boulder so that we could have them for supper. Every time I saw that piece of granite as an adult, it took me back to the presence of my grandparents and the warmth of their company. The prophet Isaiah once experienced a similar out-of-time vision while ministering at the temple. Join me as I read about it in Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 4. You can follow along with the Bible app that is located on the screen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were the seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Isaiah is one of the most important figures in Scripture. He was a prolific author who had undergone many unexpected God encounters during his lifetime. His writings are the most quoted in the New Testament, more than any other prophet. Still, to understand his ministry, we have to work deductively. Isaiah lived in challenging times, serving as a political advisor to several rulers of the kingdom of Judah. He experienced famine, war, siege, and tons of political turmoil. A word from the Lord delivered through Isaiah would change the fortunes of his people many times during his lifetime. In the scripture for today, Isaiah is serving in the temple in Jerusalem. He was clearly a priest as well as a prophet. And as he's preparing sacrifices in the holiest place of the temple, he finds himself transported to another dimension. The Holy of Holies was thought of as the throne room of the unseen God of Judah. But as Isaiah prays, the curtain between the physical and the spiritual realm is pulled back. And Isaiah finds himself face to face with God, enthroned before him and attended by worshiping angels. Isaiah paints a vivid image of the scene that he encountered. Almighty God is seated high and lifted up as a king. The train of God's robe engulfs the room, and God is surrounded by smoke. Strange angelic beings fly around the throne. This picture gives us an artist's rendering of what they may have looked like. The angels have wings that cover their faces so that they will not be exposed to the devastating effects of the undiluted glory of God. Isaiah has no cover. He sees God face to face. The angels also have wings to cover their feet for the sake of modesty, 
Isaiah stands barefoot before God like Moses at the burning bush. The song that the angels sing is one we repeat when we take communion. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. It speaks of the complete authority of God as the rightful ruler of the world. The very doorposts of that room shake at the sound of the angels' voices. And the angels repeat the song three times to emphasize how holy God is. The God that Isaiah encounters in the temple that day was free from all impurity and defilement. And as the doorposts shake and the songs of the angels fade, Isaiah falls under conviction. Woe is me, he cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Isaiah is afraid for his life. You could loosely translate his response as, I am going to die. And this is Isaiah's reaction to the vision, because he already entered the Holy of Holies ceremonially clean. Imagine how unsettling it would be to watch the angels hide their faces with their wings while you see God directly. Well, the hosts of heaven near Isaiah's despair, they hear it and they respond in a very curious way. One of the angels goes to the altar where a ceremonial fire is burning. The angel removes a coal with tongs and approaches Isaiah. The angel reaches out and touches Isaiah's lips with the burning coal. If Isaiah wasn't terrified already, his knees must have given way at that point. And seeing his fear and his loathing, the angel says to Isaiah, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. The words and the ceremony with the coal purify Isaiah a second time. Just as these dramatic events are concluding, the voice of God speaks, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? What God is asking for here is a messenger to carry words of knowledge and commands back to God's people. Normally, another angel would be chosen for this task, but Isaiah quickly responds with these words, Here am I, send me. The coal didn't just clean his lips, it put the word of God in his mouth. The rest of the vision is not as encouraging. God sends Isaiah back to God's people with a specific message, but it's not a message of hope. Eugene Peterson paraphrases that message this way, Listen hard, but you aren't going to get it. Look hard, but you won't catch on. Make these people blockheads with fingers in their ears and, and blindfolds on their eyes so they won't see a thing, won't hear a word, so they won't have a clue about what's going on, and yes, so they won't turn around and be made whole. This means Isaiah's job is to preach to an uncaring audience. Isaiah asks God how long he is supposed to deliver this message, and he's told to continue to preach it until cities and houses fall and fields dry up. Like a lot of Old Testament prophecy, this connects on two different levels. Isaiah is likely being told by God to share that message until the collapse of the kingdom of Judah, which is a near-term event. It happened in his lifetime. But it's also possible that Isaiah's message will reverberate for centuries until the Messiah comes, and that's a long-term event. This passage presents one of the most powerful and stunning God sightings in the entire Old Testament, but the purpose for our sermon series is to help you folks recognize and receive unexpected God encounters. Our purpose for this drives us towards a question. How can Isaiah's vision help us to recognize the presence of God? 
I think there are two spiritual principles that we can extrapolate from the story of Isaiah's vision in God's throne room. First, Isaiah encountered God in the middle of worship. Isaiah was going through the motion of responsibilities as a shepherd and a pastor for the people of God. Suddenly, God peeled back the boundaries of time and space to reveal what worship looked like in the dimension of the heavenly throne room of the Almighty. I understand that the idea of encountering God in unexpected ways through worship presents a few challenges for us right now. A skeptic would ask, Steve, have you ever experienced a God encounter in worship? My answer is yes, many, many times. I was working at another church years ago, setting up for the evening service. I was so frustrated and tired, and I begged God for the strength to get through it. God spoke to my spirit during that evening's worship service and told me to follow the path of Joshua. So for seven weeks, I read about Joshua's account of marching around the city of Jericho, and I walked the perimeter of my church seven times. The last week, I was struck by the fact that the Art of, of the Covenant went before Joshua when they went around Jericho, and I remembered that God's presence goes before me when I do God's work. Things slowly got better. I still walk the perimeter of this church, praying for God to go before me. A skeptic might ask, are we separated from God because we aren't worshiping face to face right now? The answer is no, not at all. Remember that Isaiah encountered God in the Holy of Holies. It's where the glory of God lived at that time. When Jesus died, the heavy curtain around the Holy of Holies, the thing that separated God from the presence of the people, was torn from top to bottom. It was a sign that because of Jesus' work, God's presence is available to all people at all times. I really long to be with you folks face to face, and it's going to happen soon. But thanks to the redeeming work of Jesus, your living room, your den, your back deck, they are every bit as holy as the place where Isaiah met God face to face. This is so important because although we will return to face-to-face -face worship, digital engagement with the church is here to stay, folks, and it's been a real blessing to us. A second spiritual principle to learn from Isaiah about unexpected God encounters is this. Isaiah encountered God through dialogue. In Isaiah 6, there is a pattern. God is revealed through a vision of worship. And Isaiah responds, woe is me. God asks, who can represent the hosts of heaven? And Isaiah responds, here am I, send me. The simple principle is this. If you find yourself in the middle of an exchange between you and God, God is working to reveal something to you. Even if your dialogue is an argument or a time filled with questions of confusion and doubt, it is still a God encounter. Because of Jesus' atoning work, God is just as close to the brokenhearted as God is to those who are engaged in joyful praise. If you get nothing else out of this message, I want you to hear this. God is equally near to us at all times. It is only our perception of the presence of God that really changes. That's indeed good news, but I want to share a bit more about recognizing and receiving God encounters. Isaiah's throne room vision teaches us that encounters with God clarify what God wants from us. It would have been enough for Isaiah to have an awe-inspiring vision of what happened in the private sanctum of Almighty God, but God had a purpose for Isaiah. 
This is important if we put it together with the idea that I just shared about the perception of the presence of God. When you are in a space where you have a heightened sense of the awareness of God's presence, it is important for you to listen for God's commands. So when you're in worship or small group study or a personal devotional time and you sense that God is near, ask yourself this question, what does God want from me right now? The last spiritual principle I want to share is this. Encounters with God center on the next assignment. One school of thought about Isaiah 6 is that the passage contains Isaiah's call story, but this wasn't Isaiah's first vision or his first assignment. He had already shared prophetic visions. God used this new vision of the throne room to launch Isaiah's ministry in a new direction. And I say that because the word send that God uses is never used in the Old Testament to signify a lifetime calling, but rather to send a specific message or a specific assignment. That message is driven home by the story of many people in the Bible. For instance, Samson was a judge until he disobeyed God. He had to return to obedience before God could use him again. If you read the Bible really carefully, you'll see a pattern of judges and prophets, kings and leaders who God works through, but only as long as they remain faithful and obedient. God's calling for our lives unfolds from task to task. Isaiah's task was not a calling to a role, but an assignment for a period of time. I don't see evidence in the Bible that God calls people to roles that are entitled lifetime appointments. I found that true in my faith journey. I moved from one role to another in my ministry career, not based on my abilities, but grounded in what God needed from me in a particular season. Our calling to God's work unfolds as we obey one assignment at a time. Let history decide at the end of your life whether you are a pastor or a prophet, a teacher, a healer. That'll take care of itself. Here's why that's such good news for all of us. It means that any day could be the day that you get a new chance to say yes to God. Today could begin a new season where God gives you a new assignment. And it also means that God has something important for each of you to do in every season of your life. I've had enough unexpected God encounters that I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is speaking to people today. Like Isaiah, I know the message God asked me to share today. I don't know who God is speaking to or where that message will take you. I do know that this entire worship service has been a dialogue with God where God may be clarifying the next task that you are called to. One of the most awesome things I get to do as a pastor is to help people discover their next God assignment. So I urge you to look for God, to listen for God's voice in your dialogue with God, and to be ready to obey. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, we do ask that you would call us, each of us, to the task that you have for us this season, the assignment that you have set aside for us, just as you did, Isaiah. God, we pray that you will speak to hearts and minds right now to clarify what it is that you need and expect from us. We ask that you will help us to find you in the midst of worship and everyday life and to see you moving us in a direction that leads towards eternal life. All this we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Each week we like to highlight a ministry that your gifts help support. And today we'd like to talk about our Lumi, our fall kickoff for Lumi. 
this was a great event where we had tons of families come out and tons of kids come out. It was a great way for kids to connect uh, with old friendships and new friendships, and we're so looking forward to Lumi kicking off uh, for the rest of this fall and however that looks. So thank you for supporting Lumi uh, so we can make events like the Lumi Fall Kickoff a possibility. If you've joined us on Sunday morning, I invite you to click on the Give tab above, or you can give by going to our website at lumcmo.org and find the Give tab there as well. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this awesome opportunity of giving God and we just uh, appreciate all the gifts that you have given us that we get to give back to you God and we just pray that the gifts that are given to LUMC will be used uh, to fulfill your kingdom work here in Kansas City. God and we uh, pray for all of our congregants um, as they are watching this that uh, that they will continue to serve you and continue to spread your kingdom uh, in this world. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We are so glad you joined us for worship. So please don't forget to join our Facebook Live devotions, which happen on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. on our Facebook page. Let me share a quick invitation for you all. 
This evening, we will have another outdoor worship service at our Sunset Campus at 6 p.m. It will be both contemporary and traditional in style, and we are asking you to bring a lawn chair and to please wear a mask. When you enter our campus for the service, simply follow the direction of our parking ushers, and most of you will stay in your vehicle once parked. However, there will be an area in the middle where some may bring a chair and sit with their immediate families. We look forward to seeing you. Have a great week, my friends. So, and here's Pastor Steve with the benediction. Would you receive today's benediction, friends? May the God of Isaiah's vision meet you in worship each day. May you be purified with the fiery coal of God's word. May you hear the voice of God sending you on your next assignment, and may you always respond, Here am I. Send me. Amen.